I'm delighted to be with you folks uh, today. Um, SARE is a wonderful program, at least uh, from my point of view. Uh, this was our second grant with SARE. It was a, the idea was to bring up an educational, there we go, uh, program for kids um, to give them a, a better idea of how wildflowers and, and bees and uh, blueberries uh, work all together. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So who are we? Well, we're a small farm in uh, near about 10 miles out of South Haven, Michigan, uh, called Moss Funnel Farms. Uh, it's got something to do with my son's uh, band uh, music name, the Funnel of Music or something going way back. Uh, makes no sense, but it sounds good. Uh, so we grow blueberries using organic practices near South Haven, Michigan. We were uh, in business about 12 years. Um, we had previously uh, were received a, a SARE grant to help uh, teach blueberry farmers or to help other blueberry farmers in our area uh, do a quick transition to organic practices. Um, it was a um, uh, really interesting project from SARE uh, uh, and uh, uh, we were uh, grateful for the uh, opportunity to do this. Um, so we already had been through the SARE process once and we uh, learned a lot uh, from it. Uh, and uh, it was uh, fairly rigorous. So um, it took us two tries basically to, to get uh, this second grant, uh, which was the one for uh, Bees Please. Um, the comments uh, in 2017 review or 2018 review were that we needed to do more sharing of our um, project with other farmers. Uh, we needed to do more field days. I suppose everybody uh, is uh, required to do that. Uh, uh, we needed to uh, measure whether this project really was, uh, was uh, going to be successful and, and if it was successful. And there were some minor concerns about the insurance and we did need a, a, to, to spell out a, a little better educational program. So those were the tasks uh, that we had to uh, undertake uh, uh, when we reapplied in 2018. Okay, next slide. So um, we tweaked uh, we tweaked the uh, proposals to uh, basically get uh, more information out during and after the the project was over. The Great Lakes Fruit Expo. Uh, was uh, a major place that we uh, were uh, able to uh, uh, show a very simple poster uh, for uh, how this project uh, could, uh, could uh, be successful and how, what we had done. Um, also, we had participated in a couple of events there at the uh, talking sessions at the expo uh, that uh, helped us uh, talk more about the program. Um, we uh, also uh, uh, worked with, uh, got some technical help in putting the, 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 the uh, basically uh, the little boards together that were along this trail we developed. Um, we worked with uh, the Michigan State Entomology Program, uh, certainly with Adam Ingrau, who's on the program today. He was there and you'll see him uh, a little more in our video. Uh, we, we reached out also to um, uh, the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum in Chicago, which has a terrific uh, program on, on pollinators, and our, and our local conservation district uh, in uh, Paw Paw, Michigan as well, for their support. Uh, we did uh, add some metrics about uh, and, and put in um, uh, methods uh, to for people to uh, use a uh, QR code to, to uh, evaluate the program. Uh, plus we uh, made sure the teachers uh, that came out for the first run um, gave us their opinion as well as the kids. And we clarified the insurance issues as well. Okay, next slide. So our target group uh, for education, for, for getting people out to this site, and let me clarify what the site is. It's a two acre 
um, uh, piece of land at the back of our back field. We have two fields. And uh, this, uh, the second field has an open two acre spot uh, next to the blueberry bushes. So in that spot, uh, we were, our plan was to build a, a trail um, for kids to walk, just simply to walk with lots of little stops along the way. I think we had like nine stops. Um, and uh, the, the type of kids we were going after were obviously kids from, local, from the local area, grade school kids. Um, we also wanted to get families visiting. Uh, this is a very heavy recreational area, as you probably know, uh, the South, uh, South Haven area is uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, growing leaps and bounds as a very popular vacation spot in the last 10 years. And also, uh, we are basically a root retail blueberry operation, so we have lots of you pickers coming to the farm in the summer. So we wanted to make this part of their, uh, their uh, experience at the farm. Next slide. So here's what we did. Um, we got the trail up and running pretty quickly uh, in the spring of 18. And um, that was the easy part, building the trail. Uh, we uh, planted wildflowers. Uh, we we uh, plant, uh, got some wildflowers planted there as well. Uh, perennials, and that's an extraordinarily expensive process, we realized, uh, and uh, also um, the planter that we borrowed from our conservation district was so heavy that it, uh, uh, our 8,000 pound tractor uh, went up in the air uh, when it was trying to pull this thing along. And we also uh, that year had a, a terribly difficult uh, uh, hot weather. Uh, so when we were building the, um, the little building there, uh, it uh, uh, was, uh, we were working in 95 degree heat to try and get it done. Next slide. So our, we wanted to make it kid friendly. I don't know about you folks, but when, when I go to uh, various museums, uh, both indoors and, and then outdoor exhibits, most of the uh, copy that's written for people to read as they as they go along a trail or a path is extremely complicated for and very adult focused um, and we wanted to make this as simple as we could and make it interesting for kids so we really focused on the uh, educational um, learning part of it um, we built the trail on this two acre parcel in in a one six mile figure eight configuration and we put a little shortcut in it uh, uh, for little kids uh, so that they could take part of the trail, not have to do it all. And as you can see, uh, uh, you, you can see that the, uh, we built a little mound for kids to, to look over. It's kind of an interesting piece of geography because it's up high, uh, the little building's up high and it kind of swoops down uh, to, um, uh, so you, you've got a nice spot for overlooking the whole thing. Next slide. So this is an example at the top here of uh, one of our uh, panels that uh, you can see in the bottom left that uh, they have these panels uh, all along the field. Uh, we tried to be clever. We tried to make it simple for people. Uh, we also, um, uh, in our little uh, kiosk that we built, uh, we also uh, had three panels there as well. Uh, they were, uh, designed with a lot of uh, care and, des and designed also to be cost effective. So they're on vinyl and they're, they stay, stay out in the field year round. Next uh, slide. We uh, reached out to quite a, a, a large amount of uh, a, a wide range of, of school districts in the area, but frankly, it was uh, late summer. People were still on vacation at the, at the school districts. Uh, and uh, so we were successful really with, uh, with our local district. Uh, we got fifth graders coming in from, for the opening from uh, the Bangor School District. NRCS, Michigan State officials showed up for the opening. Adam was our prime speaker. Uh, we, uh, we had a nice turnout of kids for the opening. Next slide. 
So it was a warm day. We had 90 kids out there, all fifth graders, great support from MSU, like I said. Uh, the, the kids uh, were terrific. I guess fifth grade is, is a special time for, uh, it's, it's at that time, it's just before the hormones kick in. And uh, the kids are still interested. They're enthusiastic. Uh, they're not super uh, young. They're kind of in a really, uh, that's kind of a sweet spot, I think, for, for education with children. And certainly to be outside is a, is a fun thing as well uh, for, for a field trip. So we uh, had a, a great opening day. Next slide. So we're gonna see a video now of that opening day and you'll see uh, Adam in there as well. If we got the audio. We get some audio. Slight technical delay, bear with us, folks. There you yeah. go. You got it. Uh, 
the kids were engaged, as you can kind of see. Uh, it was a little bit of chaotic, but but uh, uh, Adam did a great job of uh, engaging them. And we had some other. He brought a whole bunch of exhibits with and things, which really added to uh, that opening day. The teachers were very positive in their evaluations. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, somebody else could uh, bear the load of the kids for a few hours, and that made them that made them uh, happy as well. Next uh, slide. The trail, we, we learned that the trail was the easy part. Uh, weather was always a factor. It was a very hot summer. Uh, we think we fell down a little bit on promotion, uh, but it came right at a very busy part of the, uh, at the end of harvest. Uh, and, uh, but the content uh, is definitely, uh, was, we felt definitely was engaging for the kids. Next slide. So, it started in the fall and really didn't get traction because the schools already were up and running and doing other things. Uh, um, we were swamped at the farm um, and it was hard for us to do both uh, the farm and put an extra time uh, at, the, uh, at the Bees Please. We had designed it originally to be self-sustaining, to be someplace you could just drive up to and, and not have to, uh, you know, we wouldn't have to do much, but, but the, that's, a uh, and you know we passed out uh, thousands of uh, flyers uh, for people on it, uh, on the thing, and we just didn't get as much turnout as we thought. Uh, last uh, spring, um, this last spring, we had a micro blast come through, and as I mentioned earlier, this thing was at the top of a hill, um, uh, kind of a hill rise, and uh, we built this thing very well. It was it should have been able to take a bomb hit. However, the wind got under it and a microblast just to toppled the whole little building down. So we need to go back out there. Uh, we didn't have any time this year um, because we were swamped with people trying to get away from COVID. Uh, so we're gonna hopefully get it up and running again next year. Okay, next slide. The good news is that we're, we'll get things up again and running uh, because we want to make our farm more, uh, more, thing, uh, more of a destination. We want more things for people to do at the farm. So this is become a, becoming a very integral part of uh, our plan for, for 2021. Um, we're gonna make more of an effort to bring in summer tourists. Uh, last year, as you all know, it was pretty difficult to um, uh, work around the COVID restrictions. Um, the thing that um, is uh, satisfying really for us is that pollinator education for kids is hot these days. You can see maybe a little bit of a headline to the right here. Uh, just about two weeks ago, I believe, um, Ravenna School District uh, in uh, Michigan received a $100,000 grant for pollinator education uh, involving its kids. Um, and that's pretty amazing, I think. Uh, that's a testament to the importance of the subject these days. So overall, um, I think uh, uh, this was a great experience for us. Uh, we need to tweak it uh, and bring it back um, and uh, somehow get more people involved in it. Um, our experience was Sarah willing to take uh, uh, gambles on, on uh, projects like this and projects like uh, organic farmer education um, uh, speaks well, I think, to the program and how uh, it really does uh, help farmers. Thank you. Any questions, let me know. Thanks, Frank, that was awesome. What a cool way to incorporate agritourism and some value added revenue into your farm. Um, it's such a cool thing to be able to involve kids. Yeah, can you just talk a little bit about how NRCS was involved with your project and how you partnered with them? Sure. Um, NRCS uh, is a great resource for us uh, in uh, our pawpaw operation. Uh, that office has been incredibly helpful over the years to us and uh, in terms of getting uh, buildings built and, and uh, roads built. And, um, you know, they've just been an incredible operation. Uh, Jeff Douglas and uh, Steve Bear. Uh, Steve Bear, for example, uh, can, has come out and helped us do burns uh, in the spring of, uh, for, uh, of the wildflower field. Um, and that has been a real help to us. Uh, we were not able to get one done this year because of COVID. Uh, it was delayed and delayed. And by the time we got it done, uh, it was too late. So 
that uh, we're hoping to, for next year. But, you know, that's that, that was, for example, a real help. Um, Steve Bear was also out there for uh, the dedication, uh, and he's incredibly good with children like Adam. Um, so NRCS also provided the, uh, 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 the he, actually we were able to do the, the two acre parcel because of a, a set aside that NRCS funded of that piece that those two acres of our property uh, conservation set aside. Um, and um, uh, it's funded by uh, FSA, but uh, but uh, NRCS uh, was it was the driver in terms of, of helping us identify that set aside um, that uh, eventually became the Bees Please Trail. Uh, so uh, this is a um, uh, an agency NRCS that uh, that uh, can be great help to anybody. I think that's uh, that's uh, working on a SER project. You should definitely talk talk with those folks. Uh, and I also wanted to add a shout out to uh, Joan Benjamin and her group uh, that really uh, drive these uh, these SER projects and uh, keep us uh, keep us uh, straight and forward on the path uh, uh, to to. Uh, um, getting the getting the grant application correct when we get it in there and and um, uh, pushing us to to uh, do good evaluations as well.